it. So, curse the BBC. I've been seeing this pop up again and again because obviously the the date of the no the trial is actually undergoing at the moment, despite you know numerous delays and Elizabeth Holmes declaring herself pregnant, and some people think it would be a little bit you know dubious if she was pregnant or she did it on purpose. Sorry, but I've been seeing this all over the timeline recently. The Ferenos scandal. I think most people, most of you guys are aware where this young lady, Elizabeth Holmes, was tied as the next big thing in Silicon Valley. She was really young. Um, she dropped out of university or dropped out of college and she was starting up this startup that was going to lead the way in the, bio, in, the, in the medicine field. It was this thing that you could basically analyze your blood at home with this prick system, get it analyzed on your phone and an app and you'd be given, or you'd may, maybe be administered medicines directly through your machine or be able to kind of early um, diagnose things really early based on the blood sample that you're able to give. So so there's some really cool and interesting kind of, you know, um, solutions that that machine or that startup was eventually going to solve. On the paper, it sounded flipping incredible. She looked really, really impressive too. She had a turtleneck on, she had the weird deep voice, really smart and charming, whatever she spoke places. And obviously she had these big blue eyes, blonde lady. She's not, you know, she's not bad to look at and all that stuff. So it ticked all the boxes. But of course, you know, um, everything that glitters isn't gold. And this uh, investigative journalist who ended up writing a book, which I think is something, what's it called? Something blood. I think it's called something like bad blood, something like that. I read it. I think I listened to it on the, auto, on the audio book a few, couple of years ago. But regardless, he kind of dug in a bit deeper and found out that the machine didn't do what it said it did. If anything, Elizabeth Holmes was basically faking the whole thing. She'd go and pretend that the that she was taking a sample, put it in the machine, and put it in a normal machine. Just some really created crazy crazy stuff but the worst thing that she could have done obviously off the back of that was the money it seems like i don't think people are that bothered that she kind of duped a lot of the patients into believing the machine worked the way it did i think most of the thing which i think is at the center of the trial is the money that she's able to swindle out of some really big investors obviously one of the biggest being rupert murdoch who effectively i think invested somewhere between like a hundred and twenty million dollars or something stupid like that into this machine and obviously most of that money is completely gone if anything um, maybe a visceral in complete in it, no one knows and there's obviously been mainly many documentaries out there about her um on podcast form and you know some video audio documentaries that you can kind of, kind of check out but i just think it's interesting I just think it's an interesting case to kind of keep an eye on from the outside especially now when you think about her defense at the moment her defense is that that she's trying to put up is that this idea that her um partner or i think might be the the the, the the, the father to a recently born child who also was an advisor or sat on a board I think at Theranos she's now alleging that this guy was the one that was pressuring her and abusing her behind the scenes which led her to do some of the more despicable things that she did running Theranos which is interesting because when she started Theranos the whole idea was that she was the ultimate girl boss right she was the one in charge she called all the shots she had a big say on the board nothing basically got approved about her say so like she was Billy Big Balls and now suddenly that she's in trouble she's saying oh no it wasn't me i was just dabbling that damsel in distress i had no idea what was going on like so 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 heinous so this article courtesy of bbc it says fair no scandal who's lived with homes and why is she on trial it says she was the world's youngest self-made billionaire trumpet triumph um trumpeted Forbes magazine the next steve jobs said inc another business magazine that put her on a cover in 2014 elizabeth home then 30 years old was on top of the world a stanford university dropout she founded a company valued at nine billion for supposedly bringing about a revolution in diagnosing disease with a drop of a few blood fair enough promises that their thermos fairness so theranos promised that its edison test could detect conditions such as cancer and diabetes quickly without the hassle of needles big wings like henry kissinger and rupert murdoch sat on the board but by 2015 um seams were coming apart and within a year miss holmes was exposed as a fake the technology she touted did not work at all and by 2018 the company she founded had collapsed uh, miss holmes who now faced seven face faces charges of up to 20 years in prison if found guilty of fraud charges against her she has never previously told her side of the story her trial u.s holmes versus elizabeth homer tower will be closely watched and she is expected to plead not guilty in a twist that emerged this weekend, her lawyers will argue that her ex-boyfriend and business partner Ramis Sunny Belwani sexually abused and emotionally controlled her at the time of the alleged crimes impairing her mental state. Mr. Belwani, 56, who faces a similar charges, called the claims outrageous. It will then be up to the jury to decide that what sympathy or harshness the judge and the woman who fooled everyone from statesmen to secretaries. It's crazy, isn't it? 
imagine being and if you see this guy this sunny dude he doesn't look at somebody that's ever going to abuse a woman again looks can be deceiving i know but if ever there was somebody i was just probably happy to have a girlfriend happy to have somebody that looks like her kind of paying him attention that would be the kind of guy to think that he's ever going to be somebody that's going to be abusing a woman especially under that kind of guise is completely irrational and then we move on of course to these kind of interesting articles courtesy of the guardian that says elizabeth home trial spell the end of a girl boss era i don't necessarily think it does i think if anything it shouldn't really be a way to kind of because i've seen some people do it where they're basically saying see women are dumb too no women can be um uh, duplicitous and conniving and sociopathic too no one was denying that but i don't think it's that case i just think it's a case of if anything it basically exposes the fallacy that exists within startup world right especially when it comes to investing in these startups and and you know uh, placing your bets in somebody that's going to become the next airbnb or the next uber the next spotify the reason being is that when you're an angel investor or you're in a hedge fund or wherever it may be you have many stories of success but also many if not more stories of failures of times that you've missed out on a particular deal you missed out on an uber deal you missed out back in spotify when they first launched because you didn't believe in the app or something along those kind of lines so usually these kind of guys and girls are looking at ways to make up for those mistakes so they go extra hard on things that may sound just a little bit more believable than something else and sometimes the due diligence in terms of you know um, going through the books finding out if the you know technology that they're basically um, touting works the way it does work doesn't necessarily go the way it needs to go and from what i understand about the fairness case the due diligence or whoever kind of investigated the claims that fairness made was basically handled by one person and that person was working if i'm not mistaken part-time or something stupid like that so there, there's not many checks and balances when it comes to investment most of it is really down to how easy is most most of it is kind of comes down to that elevator pitch idea where it's like can you convince me from the ground floor to wherever i have to go that you have a business i should be should is worthy of my attention and then can you take that attention and present to me a deck and take that deck and present to me terms and then you get the money wired to your, your account and you can able to kind of grow your company invest in you know in salary and all that malarkey you kind know, of going forward that's what basically kind of leads to so it kind of breeds for a kind of fake it till you make it society in the startup world for the most part and i've seen it firsthand having worked in many startups over my career i've seen many companies where sometimes not knowing and pretending you do know in the beginning can serve you the best and you end up becoming the next big thing but sometimes if you're you know pretend you don't know what you're doing eventually that can kind of catch up onto you when you start scaling and the requirements and then the requirements that are being kind of asked on you or being requested of you you can't necessarily meet that's when you kind of run into a lot of trouble that way too so that can happen as well so i don't think it's really fair to kind of you know paint elizabeth home as like oh this is the end of the girl boss thing but i really touching and sad part of this story is this article here courtesy of the daily mail which again it's what i'm saying is just really interesting when it comes to these sort of stories where i guess because they can't necessarily go to trial over something like this because again there's no way of proving if this is true or false or if elizabeth holmes have anything to do with this guy passing but the trial is mainly centered around the cases of fraud right the fact that these investors are trying to recoup whatever money they've lost or kind of you know uh, bring her to justice because they feel like they've been swindled and made to look like fools but the amount of people that have been hurt around it whether it's the patients or the people working around it like this one i'm about to read to you now they don't have any real justice right she's only been tried for the basically the swindling of money and not for the lives that she's impacted cost or whatever it may be that's a real harsh part of the whole story so it's cursed your daily mail and it said how my husband fell victim to silicon valley's bad blood billionaire widow of brilliant Brit british scientist says um he was driven to suicide by the bogus blood test device invented by elizabeth home who now stands trial for 500 million fraud so she's not even been tried for this so this scientist that worked on the fairness project um drove himself to suicide um obviously the wife is alleging that he did it because he felt as if his voice wasn't being heard he was flagging up concerns about the machine she was obviously strong arming him or dismissing him and it got to a point where he basically felt like he you know the best option would be to end his life allegedly that's what she's basically saying and if that is true then she should stand to trial for this as well but i guess they can't prove it in a court of law and they think the best way to go for it is to maybe go for the fraud cases so that's a sad part of it so it continues here we we'll read for the guardian it says um like many who gravitated to Silicon Valley, British scientist Ian Gobbins, or sorry, Ian Gibbons, was drawn by his California can-do spirit. And when in 20, 2005 he was appointed science, chief scientist at the Theranos, then held as a most can-do venture of all, he was determined to help it achieve its ambition and revolutionise medicine on a grand scale. It's Wonder Kid, um, it's Wonder Kid, sorry, founder Elizabeth Holmes, just 19 when she launched the company. God damn it, no wonder people were impressed. She was 19 launching a company like this. Because imagine if it would have worked. Like, that would have been life-altering 
rating. Do you know what I mean? That would legitimately have made her like a billionaire 10 times over. Um, claimed to have developed an automated blood testing device that with a single pinprick on the patient's finger could detect hundreds of diseases and substances from cancer to cocaine and would help save millions of lives. Instead, Ian's widow, Rochelle, told the Daily Mail this week that Ferno says evil chief executive Holmes cost him his life after he dared to challenge their claims to have protect, um, and their claims to have perfected their miracle diagnosis machine. As a rigorous and honest scientist, he soon realized his grandiose claims for the device were hollow and that it actually put patients' lives at risk. In May 2013, the, the night before he was summoned to Holmes' office for what he was certain was be sacking and given that he was 67, the end of his career, Ian took an overdose of painkillers and he died of hospital a week later. Like, tragic, tragic story. A quote here says, and you know, Holmes never said anything, said Rochelle. She never offered her condolences, helped or anything. She was just a bitch. Instead, Rochelle simply received a call from Fairness asking her to return any company property. Oh my God, for a late happens at home. This week, Elizabeth Holmes' moral characters once again under scrutiny after her after she went to try and San Jose, California. And again, I've been there, man. I've worked for flipping, you know, <coughs> Nicholas Sullivan, um, flipping dickhead, you know, founders who claimed their startup did one thing, but it did it did neither of what they were basically claiming. Neither no, it did completely nothing. Right? It was just a complete, and uh, you know, a complete farce, an illusion, a mirage. Let's say right. And they had the similar sort of thing. They never apologized. They never felt like they were responsible for the failings of the company that led to people being put out of work and set back their career for many, many years, right? They never was the one to apologize for it and they probably never will. So you're going to have to come to a point where you basically are able to move on. Your, you, you have to come to a point where you're able to accept and move on as opposed to waiting for an apology from the said person that just is never going to happen especially when you're a narcissist sociopath like these sort of people it continues it says she is charged with 12 counts of fraud and conspiracy to commit fraud via financials involving the use of telecommunications and internet along with her former business partner and ex-lover Ramsey Sunny Balwani Homestead Balwani who tried next year had has denied the changes um da -da -da -da. any more quotes from the mum? no for the lady here Oh, yes, it's here. Rochelle Gibbons has been following the case closely and wishes her husband Ian could be there. She says, it's really hard to think that he committed suicide not knowing the rest of the story and she told the Daily Mail. She's particularly shocked at the recent revelations that Holmes' lawyers say that she will claim her judgment was impaired because of the emotional and sexual abuse suffered by Belwani, who is 20 years her senior, um, alleging that he monitored her calls, emails and phone messages and would hold hard, sharp objects at her during their decade-long relationship. And uh, um, the wife of the widow, oh, sorry, the widow says the following, it's a weird defense because she started off as being the sort of superwoman right no one was going to get in her face and now she's ending the week with a leak with little i'm a new mommy defense but on another level rochelle gibbons isn't remotely surprised she says she's a sociopath so she's never going to accept blame there she is there like many she's she has no doubt guilt gilms's guilt she says there's no question she intentionally misled people the worst thing is that she unleashed a fraud on patients so yeah let's see man i'm, I'm curious to see if the, she's actually going to face any criminal punishment i don't necessarily think she's going to get any jail time personally i think she's probably gonna have to pay massive fines which you evidently have to pay over a series of years because she probably doesn't have any money to her name i don't know what kind of career she's going to be able to you know start for herself after this but i could easily see her moving into crypto or moving into the flipping nft world very easily people will be kind of swooned and persuaded by her idea of you know pursuing a new you know you know breaking through new realms and stuff in the world of crypto and nfts i can see that happening but in terms of her sitting in a jail cell, jail cell anytime soon i just don't see it i really really don't personally but you know i could be proven wrong but yeah i'm, I'm gripped to it as well i'm actually gripped as watching this from the outside in i cannot lie